Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you to Mr. Sanu and thank you to the ITU for the invitation to speak with you today. Each new generation of technology brings with it, as been noted, opportunities and challenges. Australians have earned a reputation for being early adopters of each new wave of communication innovation. In the Australian market, our latest figures from 1617 show that nine out of 10 households are connected to the internet. Eight in 10 Australians own a smartphone, and DALSA downloads increased by 43% between the June 16 and June 17 quarters to 3.1 million terabytes. It's clear that the communications sector is now central to the work, home, and social lives of all Australians. It is also clear that expectations on the sector are only likely to increase. This symposium is a very timely opportunity to reflect on how we can deal with the challenges we collectively face in looking at the fast-moving communications environment. In Australia, we're already planning for the rollout of 5G services, including a forthcoming auction of the 3.6 gigahertz um, spectrum band. The promise that 5G will accelerate a fourth industrial revolution, already underway through the Internet of Things, and be able to deliver to sectors including health, transport and agriculture are all contributing to the unprecedented government-wide attention being paid to 5G. 5G will not only offer the capability to accommodate high bandwidth, low latency applications, such as lower cost robotics, but also high latency, low bandwidth applications, such as water sensors and every possibility in between and it will facilitate human-centred applications and communications, as well as machine-to-machine -machine applications. It will advance machine learning, such as AI, which will be critical for such things as automating the management of network traffic and immense flows of data. This will also bring new threats and challenges to things like personal security, and certainly there's an increased risk to cyber security particularly where adequate protections have not been built into the underlying so software. And as Mr. Sunu mentioned, while AI is likely to po pose a risk to cyber secur security, it can also be a possible solution for protecting security of networks and the data and applications used on them. As a regulator, we need to be careful that we don't get ahead of the technology by trying to regulate a threat that we can't really define, let alone understand. And we need to work with industry to better inform ourselves. It's important that we set the right regulatory landscape to encourage investment in the infrastructure needed to support innovative development of new services, as well as protecting consumers and promoting competition. Of course, we don't want to be also found behind the curve, playing catch up. So the regulator, we need to be well informed, as well as flexible enough to address issues in the communications sector as quickly as they present to us. Fast-moving times require fast-moving regulatory responses, and that means we may not be able to wait for a perfect regulatory framework to be developed before we need to act. We'll need to use the tools that we have, perhaps in new and innovative ways, to address concerns as they emerge. Some of the questions that we have to ask ourselves when considering how to both maximise opportunities for innovation and economic benefit, as well as looking after the rights of consumers, include, will spectrum sharing and infrastructure sharing po uh, policies work and be fit for purpose? Will security be more complex with a massive increase in connected network infrastructure? What are the security implications of a wide array of applications operating over very dense networks? When network slicing and AI algorithms offer opportunities to deliver a wide range of service outcomes, such as network quality, speed and access, will there be enough transparency of these for consumers to make decisions? And do policy and regulatory ag agencies have sufficient understanding of the technology, the environment and the market conditions to create the right policy and regulatory settings? And what staff capability and resources do we need? Exponential shifts in technologies, markets and consumers are a significant disruptive force for governments as much as they are for business and for individuals. They lead to new expectations and a need for shifts in thinking and approaches. The Australian Government took a step forward 
planning for this disruptive power of AI when it recently al allocated 30 million Australian dollars in its federal budget to fund the development of AI technical roadmap as well as a national AI ethics framework. These are designed to help identify opportunities in AI and machine learning for Australia and support the responsible development of these technologies. I hope that Australia is able to share with you what we learned from these exercises to shape a responsible direction for in our international approaches. In Australia, we know from our experience dealing with offshore gambling sites that we cannot act in isolation, particularly when the threats are similar and global. Collaborating with international partners and sharing information is critical when we face similar challenges. Certainly, our local cybersecurity is strengthened when our, our dynamic domestic cybersecurity industry is reinforced by international partnerships. This symposium presents a perfect opportunity to share and learn from each other about the issues we all face and the approaches we are taking to address our future challenges. I look forward to the discussions over the coming days and again I thank the ATU for this important symposium and the opportunity to address you this morning. Thank you.